I think the eight hour suggestion is probably another one of those myths as well. And I have probably been more responsible for perpetuating that myth early on when after I sort of first released my book. It is a myth because it's not a hard and fast single number, one size fits all. There is a bell curve distribution. It really is seven to nine hours. Some people will need maybe sort of only creeping above seven hours and that they feel fantastic. Other people could sleep eight and a half hours and they will feel miserable the next day because they need at least another half an hour, maybe even more. So the average suggestion would be for the average person, sure, eight hours, but no one is the average person. We're all unique. So I think if you were to ask me, how do I find out what my innate sleep need actually is? It's tricky, but the way that you can do it, if you get the chance to ever go on a vacation where it's you, you decide what you're going to do, you don't feel guilty, there's nothing to wake up for, you just, it's on your own time. The first couple of nights you sleep without an alarm clock, you're going to indulge. You're gonna have nine hours, 10 hours, because all of us in society carry a sleep debt. But then after about night three or night four, you'll start to come back down and you'll acquiesce at your fine sweet spot of optimal sleep. And for some people it'd be eight and three quarters. I mean, I, for example, you know, I'm probably around about seven hours and 15 minutes. If I get less than about seven, I can start to tell a cognitive impairment. Uh, my much better half, uh, my wife, she needs usually around about nine hours of sleep. If she gets what I get, she doesn't feel so great but it's different for different people. So yes, it's a bit of a myth that eight hours, this this singular sweet spot, this holy grail, this Shangri-La of all kind of clock time sleep amount. It's not, there's a wonderful range.